Now, a woman from Liverpool has dedicated her life to easing the pain of cancer sufferers in Africa. Dr Anne Merriman has campaigned tirelessly to make oral morphine affordable. It's a campaign which has made a massive difference and means people can die at home in peace. Anne was born into an Irish Catholic family in Liverpool but found herself in Uganda helping others. We'll hear from her shortly. First, Judy Hobson has been looking at the work of Hospice Africa. So we're going to see, visit Jovia. She's become really ill in the last month. Uh, she's very near end of life. Uh, so hospice has been visiting her very regularly to make sure that she's comfortable and peaceful and that she has enough morphine and food and, uh, and money for supplies. This medicine is helping me very much. After, after four hours, I take four milliliters. Four milliliters. So I, mean, I thank God for that because I didn't know that I would get it. Some relief for Jovia and her family. She died three weeks later from cervical cancer, aged just 29. Dr Anne Merriman's charity has changed the lives of thousands of people like Jovia by introducing affordable morphine for end-of-life care, something we take for granted. And so we need African palliative care that is suitable to the economy and suitable to the culture and make sure that the magic formula that we brought to Kenya originally and then to Uganda will spread so that affordable oral morphine will be available in the home for these patients who are suffering so much. Although this shop in Liverpool helps to raise money for the charity, one of the financial backers from the United States has come to the end of its contract. Dr Merriman says the charity must keep going. When I was four, my mother had told me as I grew up that I had told her that when I saw pictures of the sick in Africa that I was going to help them when I grew up. And indeed I did. That stuck with me all my life. And now I have been in Africa for 38 years. She says she's looking for a billionaire so this vital work can continue. Judy Hobson, BBC Northwest Tonight. Well, I'm happy to say that we are now joined by Dr Anne Merriman. Thank you so much for coming to speak to us. This is obviously yeah. something that's been with you your whole life since you were a little girl. Tell us very briefly how this organisation came about to do this amazing work. I first said I wanted to go to Africa when I was four, apparently, and to work with the sick, and which I did eventually. And um, palliative care was came to mind when I was in geriatric medicine in Liverpool, and actually... When I went to Nairobi, I realised that even in Nigeria, I hadn't realised what happened to patients when they went home. We think everybody sees, goes to hospital in Africa, but they don't. There's very few that can afford it. They have to pay for everything. And if they don't have the money, they can't reach. 95% of cancer patients never get treatment for their cancer. It's so different to here. And they stay at home and they die with smelling tumours and screaming, sometimes in pain all night. So it's, uh, it's, it's so tragic to see it. And, and yes. you came up with this idea of oral morphine that would, would help people that otherwise had no hope of dying peacefully. Exactly. The only reason that they didn't have palliative care previously was you can't control the, f the problems facing death when you are screaming in pain. You, pain takes over your mind, everything part of you. It's interesting that the point you just made when we were talking before we came on air, you talked about the pain that these people were in before you were able to provide mm -hmm. the medicines, the morphine for them. As you said, families quite often would put them out of the house into a, an outbuilding yeah, because so they, they were screaming so night. much in the night. Exactly. So the family could sleep at night and take care of them during the day. Yeah. It's incredibly distressing. Anyone who's, who's had a family member in this country who's gone through a, a cancer treatment will know how painful it can be and how important that, that medication is. One patient said to me yesterday, I'd rather die than face the pain that's coming back again. Mm. You know, it's the fear of the pain coming back again. They were ready to die. It's phenomenally important work that you've dedicated your life to and yes. you're still obviously very passionate about this. But tell us the straits that the organisation finds itself in now. There's, there's three things. First of all, because we are the centre almost of, of training for palliative care throughout Africa, if we go down, many others are going to go down with us. Already they're feeling the, the loss of donors due to the fact that donors are in recession and they have dropped off palliative care as the lowest priority in health. So that, that has made everybody in, in a problem. But if we go down, we lose 
our patient care, which is the only one, we're the only one that can demonstrate that you can really bring a patient to peace. And our patients do reach peace and they die in peace. Because the model that you set up in Uganda is now replicated across, what, 37 countries in 35 Africa? Countries, 35 countries, yeah. Countries 35 Africa. countries now say they have palliative care. They don't all have the affordable morphine yet. There's always a bit of a block with the governments, but it takes time for us to negotiate with them to get that in. Can you source this morphine? I mean, at one stage you were making it yourself, weren't you, in, in yeah, the Yeah, we hospice. made it at the kitchen sink for 17 yeah. years. And, and then you were able to source it from America. That supply now, if I'm right, is coming no, to... No, sorry, the, it's the manufacturing equipment came from America. Right. We, we import the morphine either from Kenya or from Edinburgh, actually, okay. the powder. And it's only four ingredients. Easier to make than a cup of coffee. We made it at the kitchen sink for the 17 years. Now we manufacture it for the whole country on a public-private partnership with the government. That's the only money we get from the government, is the money for the and, morphine. And the key thing you said at the start of this is you need a billionaire. You're looking for a billionaire. That's we what need a billionaire. Is it all money now that you need it's to keep It's all about going? money. We've had to reduce our team by 30%, which means that we can't do all the things we really need to do for the poor, because the majority of our patients are very, very poor. OK? And also, we, we, we really need to, to continue with this morphine production. And the government have just renewed our contract for three years, but that's not sufficient Obviously for it to don't continue. Need a billion, though. How, much, how much would you need to keep going? We need, when we were really fully going and 100, 135 staff, it cost a million a year to run everything, including the Institute. Now, the Institute um, confers degrees, bachelor's degrees for nurses, and um, it's moving on to master's degrees as well for the doctors as well. Now, this, we've, we were considering closing it because they can't get their scholarships anymore because the scholarships are for palliative care and palliative care is dropping off. So we need scholarships, please. We need money for the scholarships for the students and we need the money to care for our patients. And if we could get at least a million a year from somebody, that would really keep us going very well. Dr Merriman, thank you so much for coming and sharing your story with us. Really appreciate your time. Dr Anne Merriman, joining us there. Thank you.